This is my new IP camera. It's a security camera, but the picture quality is pretty good. You can see that by this film, because it's made with exactly the same camera. This camera works with a Sony IMX sensor for a 2 megapixel 1080p picture. The camera is very light sensitive, so even with not much light it gives a good picture quality. The camera has a standard M12 lens mount, so you can change the lenses, and the lens that's on here right now is adjustable. The camera can't focus by itself, but you can do that manually, and with a lot of IP cameras you can't do even that. The lenses and other parts of this camera, you can buy them individually. This camera works with a high silicon 3516C chipset and that contains a Unix computer. So maybe this camera can do more than you would think. Camera has two connections, one for network and one for power. The mains adapter might be or might not be included in the price and it's 12 volt 2 amps. I connected the camera with the standard IP address, and that's 192.168.110. First, I'll check if it is working. Okay, it looks like it's connected. Now I use Nmap to quickly check which ports are open. Hmm, there are more ports open than you would think. Okay, so the next step is to connect to the camera from the browser. Okay, the manual says I need to use Internet Explorer, but why wouldn't it work with Chrome? I'll just have a try. Okay, apparently it only shows Chinese. Luckily enough, username and password are already filled out. And Chrome can translate. This is the button for a picture. Oh, no picture. The plugin doesn't work. I'll just drop out then. As a second chance, I'll try Firefox. Okay, just Chinese text and no Chrome translation, of course. Okay, can we have picture? Quick time. Yes, it works. Brilliant. But uh, a lot of the buttons here are missing. Okay, I'll just log out. This one here is log out in Chinese, I know now. Okay, so I'll have to use Internet Explorer, and how do you do that under Linux? Well, there are multiple solutions. One popular solution would be to run it under Wine. But this time I chose a different solution. I downloaded a virtual computer from Microsoft, specially designed to use Internet Explorer. And you can see that I booted it here. Let's check how it works. I just enter the IP address of the camera here. Okay, that looks better. There's here a, a language selection box. Oh, it wants to install an ActiveX component. Well, okay, install it. What could go wrong? Yeah, okay. Okay, apparently in Internet Explorer they block your ability to install ActiveX components from your own devices. But luckily enough we have this download button and it will download new active.exe from seku.com. Hmm. Okay, what could go wrong? Just download the software and install it. Okay.
Okay, yeah. First, I put this language on English, otherwise I wouldn't be able to read anything. Next, 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 finish. Okay, so that's installed. Mm, refresh. Oh, another message. Yeah, this is the software that I just installed. Allow, refresh again. This should be it. Just put it in full screen. Login. Okay. Yes, there's the image. Okay, so why do you need to click to change the settings? That's here at device config. I'll show you all settings in the menus. These are record and snapshot. This is the event menu and events are called alarm. Next is the system menu, and that shows general settings. For instance, this is the general general settings menu. Under encode, you can set how the camera encodes the video. You can see the two video flows, on the left the high resolution video flow, and on the right the low vi resolution video flow. They are both compressed with H.264. The high resolution stream is VGA or HD and the low resolution stream is VGA or quarter VGA. And the other parameters are similar for high and low resolution. Network screen, those are the network settings and you can see here that the camera supports DHCP only it just isn't activated by default. And you see that I already adjusted some of the DNS settings on this screen. The network settings then, and these are so versatile, for every setting you could make a separate video. And the two most important settings in this screen are email and FTP. And that's because the event menu uses those. I didn't configure email and FTP yet because that's what I make separate videos for. RTSP is important because this is your live video feed, for instance when you use VLC. GUI display, those are things that you can enter into the picture. Here you can configure the name for your camera and region cover covers up parts of the picture. Okay, and if you put a check mark next to time title or channel title, then you can use this screen 
to configure where those two are displayed on the screen. So these are all overlays on the video signal. Pan, tilt, zoom is not available on this camera, but you can configure things. So it appears that the camera also has an RS485 interface. And while these interfaces, they might be present, but I think the pins aren't available on the outside of the camera. So it's of not much use. And for the RS232 interface, things will be the same. And apparently the camera would support a GPS interface if you could connect it. And in this screen, finally, there are the parameters for the video sensor. And you see there are many settings, and I just left them all at default. And the beginning of this video, you know, the part with the unboxing, that was filmed with these settings. Last menu is the advanced menu. It has a screen for hard disk management for a hard disk that's not included. And this is really useful because here you can change the accounts, for instance, the password of the admin account. Next menu is auto maintain. And here you can enter that the camera reboots automatically every day or every week. This is to reset the default settings. This is to import or export settings to a file. This is a button to reboot and the upgrade function I used it myself to upgrade the firmware. And on this screen you see that the camera tries to build up a net connection. And I would like to know to which side. And that's why I run this netcat in the background. And here you can see that the connection would go to cq100.net. And that's very handy because yeah, you can build up a connection to the outside world, even if the camera is blocked in the firewall. 